Hi everyone, welcome to our Insecure Season 5, Episode 5 Recap and Review. Welcome in, welcome in. Just give us a few seconds for Samaria to join. And while we wait for her, make sure you put your love episode five in the chat. Hey, welcome in, welcome in everyone. Hey girl. Hey. All right. Hey Ward 07. <laughs> hey Champagne. <laughs> Hey girl, thanks for tuning in. Whew, we're halfway. I thought this was a good episode, I thought. Oh, well, I'm not gonna give my rating just yet. I'll let you go first. <laughs> okay, so I think the Lawrence episode, episode three was still the best so far, but I think this was a second for me. Really? I think so. Mm. For me, I think, was it episode two when they went to stanford one oh episode one okay i feel like that may have been my number two after three okay. one okay on a scale of one to ten i would give it a six okay i would say eight but that's cool <laughs> <laughs> it just felt like it moved a little bit slower a lot happened but not that much i don't know Okay, so do you want to start talking about Molly's mom, obviously, like, having her shrink, that being a big thing this episode? Yeah, so before we get to Molly's mom, let's get to Miss Molly, because I was hoping they would show the guy's face, because I was trying to see if it was the guy that she met. It wasn't. I know. It was, I guess, some random guy, and I just... I'm not here for the way they're showing, like, I guess this carefree, you know, just go with the flow, Molly. You know, it's it just feel, it feels like she's swung too far left. But, yeah, we can skip ahead of that. I agree. Um, while we're on that topic, her dress <laughs> that she showed up to the hospital in, I was like, dang. But when things happen like that, you are just like, whatever I have on, that's just going to be it because I have to be there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, so we can talk about the hospital if you want to give your thoughts on that scene. Um, I definitely saw Molly just like trying to be in control of everything. You know, like she feels like she has to be the calm person. Uh, she feels like she has to be the one who's in control of things. She thinks other people are going to fall apart without her. And um, I have felt that way. And I think a lot of times you just have to not be there. Not in this situation, obviously, because it, <laughs> it's her mom. Yeah. But you really just have to not be there and see that, hey, people actually can make it without you. And she she needs to learn that. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Um, another thing, this hospital, the way that they got the patient wrong, I will be questioning every single thing. So I was with her, you know, I'm jumping ahead, but when she was like, hey, we need to recheck whatever y'all did, because they tried it. That is crazy. And she was like, yeah, I know, you know, it can be tough to see. Her dad said, do you really think this woman is my contemporary? <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, they, I, I had a feeling they would get it wrong, like when he was so fast about you might want to come and say your final goodbyes. I was like, watch them take them to the wrong person. Um, so yeah, that hospital was definitely janky. <laughs> right. Yeah, she was definitely trying to keep it together. And you do need that person, especially if it's your parent and your other parent is kind of not processing things in the moment. And you just want to give them, I guess, the extra bandwidth to you know, understand that their spouse is going through this. So you're like, hey, let me take the lead. Mm -hmm. But also doesn't know how to relieve things off of her plate, which we'll see, you know, later on in the episode. I think that may be a problem. So Yeah, but I do get it because just based on previous seasons, what we've learned about her brothers, can she really depend on them to, to be in control? She kind of has to be that way. And I feel yeah. like that's, I think a lot of Black women are that for their families where it's like, I have to step in and I have to be everything. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, you just have to learn how to delegate and remove yourself sometimes from situations. And you'll find that, oh, when I'm not there, 
they actually know how to get it together. <laughs> you know, they kind of respond. So she's just going to have to learn. How did you feel about her keeping the work assignment, even though there's so much going on? I think that's the go-getter, uh, overachiever part of her personality, where it's like, yeah, I have this big thing going on, but I still have all this work. I have my work stuff that I'm trying to accomplish as well. Like, I want to make partner. So I think it's her just trying to be continue to be successful in all areas of her life, even though of all the moments, like, girl, this is the moment to maybe be like, hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. But I wasn't thrilled with Tori and, like, okay, if my assistant said that I'm out of the office with personal stuff, but you're still calling me. Why? <laughs> come on. And so, yeah, I understand they have that other retreat project, whatever that's due, but that just screamed shady. He could have probably waited until the next day, but I've been having seen, I haven't been seeing it for him, so I'm not surprised. Especially if, like, that wasn't the absolute last day, mm -hmm. and her assistant said, you know, like, we you know she's out on personal whatever um i think he definitely could avoid it and like it's it's not well i don't know we're not lawyers so maybe it was that deep but is work ever really that deep like probably not <laughs> <laughs> um okay so <laughs> her guilt uh just really quickly about like what she was doing when she found out her mom was like having the stroke i I think it's a little bit warranted. Of course, like, we're out here living our lives, but it's, like, if something, like, God forbid, her mom doesn't come out of this situation, which I I think she will because there was a preview of her mom, like, talking, but that's, like, the last thing that she's going to have on her mind. She's going to have that forever. Like, man, that's what I was doing when my mom needed me the most or whatever. But she could have been sleeping. Like, any time yeah. I think something big or tragic happens, you think about where you were when that said event was happening to that person, if you're the person that works a lot and you took on an extra shift, you're like, man, I should have been working less. I should have, yeah. I was sleeping peacefully while they were dealing with whatever. So I really think no matter what she was doing, there would be that sense of guilt. But given what she was doing, I think she feels even more like that was unnecessary because it was with some random guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's kind of what Issa, just if we don't mind, like, going to the Issa and Molly friendship. I really enjoy watching them this episode, um, because Issa did remind her of that, and she showed up, like, immediately. and I, I love that, because when you're the strong friend, you know, like, you kind of feel like, oh, I don't need, <laughs> I don't need anybody. Even when Issa first got there, and she was like, do you need food? Do you need these? You know, and she's like oh, no, I'm fine. I'm just making sure everybody's okay. But what she really needed was those clothes. So I'm glad. Issa, <laughs> I'm so glad Issa pulled up because that dress was not doing it for the hospital setting. Yeah, I love that too. And it just shows that, you know, obviously, you know, you have your friends, you're there in those exciting, fun, hanging out moments. But when you're going through things in life, like your friends are right there, hopefully with you if they're a good friend. And yeah. they're we're on the roller coaster, the ups and downs. And so I'm glad that they showcased that. And I'm glad that they were able to mend their friendship so that when she did go through this, she had Issa there to call on because they haven't really shown her with any other super close friends. And when things like that happen, you're not going to call your associates. Like you're going to call your good, good girlfriend who's like a friend of the family super right. to help you through that time, not, you know, Sally from work. Right. I don't want anybody around who hasn't been around my family. I think right. like I said, well, I was just there the other day and her mom was fine. So it's like, like you said, they're through the good times, but also now that things have taken a, a huge turn. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this a little bit, but this whole idea of like now needing to parent our parents. <laughs> so finding out that her dad kept the stroke, the first stroke from them, I thought was a pretty like, telling thing because the parents feel like oh we're the parents we can handle it but now it's like stuff has hit the fan and y'all really can't you know yeah so I will say that just from my own personal experiences like I've had conversations like that with my parents like why aren't y'all telling me these things even if it's not health related I'm like I yeah. shouldn't know these things but then I do have to remember like okay I am the child they're the parent and it's not like a light switch that can be turned on and off. Yeah. Like, 
no matter how old you are, they're still going to see you as a child. And if you think about it, like it's a big transition for them to go through with, okay, like now I'm treating you like a child, but now you're an adult mm -hmm. in adult situations. But then now that I have a child myself, I kind of am of that mindset too of like, <laughs> obviously I want him to know, but then like, I wouldn't want my child to be worried. Yeah. So, yeah. It's you know, really annoying. I, I really do want to get to like Issa and, um, and Nathan. Oh. But I just, <laughs> all the molly stuff out of the way because um anyway i'll tell you later but um the aunt oh it's so annoying but that's how older people are like it's just like oh such and such want to pray on speaker right quick but we are in this cafeteria do you think we need to be on speaker <laughs> like but also i mean it's, it's always a good time for prayer so there's that but on speaker in the middle of the cafeteria maybe not like hit me up so we can pray together. <laughs> but that's so relatable, though, because I think many of people can relate to that one aunt who's just doing the most. She can't help it. And the other aunt on the phone who feels like there's no bad time to pray. Yeah. In public. So that was a very relatable scene. And then how she was talking about, yup, we couldn't even get her to respond. Like, we all live this together. I don't need you telling people you know, like it's just, like yeah. I remember just one of my aunts is very much like that. And I was just like, what are you even thinking right now? Like, what makes you think other people are okay with you disclosing this information, but then talking about it in that way? Like, yo, girl, she can't, she doesn't even know we there. Like, mm -hmm. it's appropriate. Do, okay, sorry to go too deep on that, but do you think that that's, just because, like, as the aunt, they're like, oh, it's my sibling. But then, like, for them mentally, they're maybe not be thinking about, but those are their children or their grandchildren. Like, they're just like, oh, well, that's my sibling. And, you know, we basically came into the world together. <laughs> They've done way more life together. Yeah, so there is an understanding that I think kids just have to have. Like, I've been with this person way longer than you have, way longer than your dad has. And so there is that sense of like, entitlement that mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I get it, but it's, it's just insensitive. You just have to deal with it though. But yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask you what you thought about Issa and Nathan first, because apparently my word could not be trusted. I had a whole thing with my friend group chat last night after the episode and I had to stand my ground. I was the only one thinking the way I was thinking. So I will let you take over as far as Issa and Nathan and say your thoughts first. Okay. So when the scene first starts, I'm thinking, oh, okay, this is really cute. How they're like, oh, you know, are we going to spend more time together? Like this is a part of their dynamic that we haven't seen. Like in the past, I feel like they've, have like this joking, jovial, sarcastic type of vibe. Yeah. Maybe even I'll see you when I see you, but to see them in the element of, oh, I really want to spend more time with you. Yeah. I think that whole scene was really cute. Um, for me, something that I just felt as the scene progressed, I don't know if it was his vibe or energy or what, even though he seemed eager and like hey I'm here for you I'm there for you and I don't know if it's because you planted this in my head last week something was just making me feel like this might come crashing down huh. something just didn't feel natural or right about it and I don't know why because other than jumping ahead when he didn't reciprocate what she said <laughs> Everything that he was saying and doing seemed good. Like, he picked her up, dropped her off. Yeah. But something about it just isn't sitting well with me. And I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, yeah, I, I can't say that I'm not here for it. I just don't know if it's genuine. Something seems off. Hmm. Interesting. I, I thought it was really cute. And I have to start off by saying that because apparently I'm like, I hate Nathan or team I hate Nathan. But I really thought it was cute. I 
I think it took me back to that one day they spent together in season three. So mm -hmm. it was those vibes. And I will say to Nathan's credit, he is very present. Like when he needs to be there for Issa, um, with the exception of that one time, like he is very present. Mm -hmm. <sighs> However. <laughs> See, I, it was because you put it in my head. I knew it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just feel like she's often the one moving things forward. Um, like she was the one to say, oh, I don't want to just be your friend. And now she was the one to say, um, do you want to like hang out today? You know, like he said, oh, I'm not really doing nothing. I have this day, whatever. And she's like, oh, well, we should maybe spend some time again. Like, do you want some you time or, mm -hmm. you know? And then, of course, with what happened at the end with her saying those three words, and, uh, and him not saying it back. So I do feel like oftentimes she's pushing things forward. How did you feel about him announcing that he was her boyfriend? <laughs> oh, um, if he were to be like, um, I didn't necessarily mean that or I was on the spot, I'd give him some grace for that. Only because, I don't know, when you're talking to someone's mom, maybe you don't know their full like relationship dynamics or what you don't really know what to say or how mm -hmm. to you don't know what the person has told their parent so whichever answer he would have given i would have been like it is what it is your mom i mean even though moms do stuff like that she shouldn't have did that <laughs> like she, right. she, she was doing the most um Yes. Um, so Craft Savvy Market says they're moving too fast, trying too hard. It's just something's just not right. <laughs> but, but, but they kept saying, oh, well, you know, we're supposed to be taking things slow. We're supposed to be taking things slow. Like I heard it at least three times. But then I kept thinking, y'all keep saying y'all need to take things slow. You basically have spent two years being friends. You're finally at the point of dating and Y'all are doing the most about, I guess, calling each other boyfriends or girlfriends or now you still want to take things slow? Like, is this going to be another three, four years dragged out? Like, what are you taking things slow for? Like, the whole friendship was taking things slow. Okay. So I, I don't, and that's why I think I was getting a uneasy feeling because it's like, just let things naturally progress. Mm -hmm. It's like, Y'all are doing things that boyfriends and girlfriends do, but then you're like, well, wait, 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 we're taking things slow. Yeah. But then you're saying things like, oh, yeah, I'm her boyfriend. And you're saying the three words. Yes. Y'all are confused. I, I didn't like the whole, yeah, I'm her boyfriend. And then the conversation they had after where he was like, no, I meant it. Because I'm like, <laughs> like, that, that would have been cute at like nine. <laughs> you know, it would have been cute if I, if they were 19 years old, but they're, <laughs> Um, what, 31, because they just had their 10-year college reunion, uh, but like 31, 32 within that age range. And so it's like, okay, I need you to say things with your whole chest at this point. If you're trying to be my boyfriend, be my boyfriend. Mm, I think the lack of a love scene sent a message, too, from the writers. Mm. That's true. That is very true, because it was just like, very much hanging out. Like, I'm here in the morning. I'll bring you your coffee. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I like them as friends. Like, I think he can do all the things he's doing for her, with the exception of spending the night, as a friend. Like, he can still pick her up. He can still, like, build her up or whatever it is that people like to see him doing. <laughs> with her. But uh, he could do that as a friend. And yeah. I say, like, I don't agree that he should have told the mom, like, hey, I'm your, her boyfriend but when you're in the moment and you're dealing with parents and you just kind of say whatever and you're nervous you're not sure i'd be like all right i'll your it's because your mom was doing the most so if he gave an answer that wasn't the best i'd let it slide but then get clarification but even if i'm going to be your girlfriend like this is a conversation that you would have need to have have with me beforehand like this whole well i guess we're boyfriend and girlfriend we're not in middle school it was, it was very like juvenile, <laughs> you know, like I, I didn't like it at all. Um, and I think we're just, we're just a little bit older than that. They're a little bit older than that. So they need to be clear about what their intentions are <laughs> moving forward. I understand that sometimes people fall into things and they end up working, but 
that's not probably the case for the majority of people. So I think I would have just liked to see that a, a not bit. At, <laughs> huh? Not at 30 something. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, also, if I were Issa, my mom would have never gotten to talk to him. I would have been like, who? <laughs> I'm not looking at Eddie Rocky. Mm -hmm. I would have to box him out, but yeah, um, so didn't like that. But he was really helpful with the whole flavor flame getting missing. And... Oh, <laughs> oh, Issa, I mean, you have one job, <laughs> and now this poor dog is gone. But yeah. um, all right, so the end, she tells Nathan that she loves it. Well, she doesn't directly say it, I guess they're just such an indirect relationship. But she doesn't directly say, I love you. She says, see, you're so patient with me. That's why I love you. And then there's silence. They play music, so it's not silent for us, but. OK, so f to me, I don't think she said, I love you. I think that that was just a figure of speech. Like the way, I'm not saying that she doesn't mean it, but the way that it came up, it wasn't like very direct. Like, I would say that to you, like, oh, da, 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 oh, girl, that's why I love you. But like, you love me. okay, <laughs> I do, but people say that just casually, and so, um, yeah, I don't know why she said it because I don't think he's the person that she should have casually said that to, and I just huh. think that it makes things even more awkward than it already is. Like, how are you saying that? And just earlier in the day, you supposedly got confirmation that this is your boyfriend. I don't, yeah, I don't understand this. And maybe she loves him in a friendship type of way. Like I just got love for you. Um, I don't know. Why don't you think he's the person that she should say it to? <sighs> Once again, she's always the one moving things forward. He just seems like he's along for the ride, and he's down for whatever. Like, it's cool with me. Yeah. Like, we're laid back, which I think is okay. But I don't know. Just, like, over time, if you're the one person that's, like, moving things forward to make things more serious, to hang out more, to say those big words. Like, girl, are you going to be proposing next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think she did meant it. To me, she did say I love you because in that <laughs> silence, she could have fixed it. Remember at the beginning when she said, um, oh, do you want some me time? And then she fixed it and was like, I mean, not like me time, Issa, but you time, Nathan. There was enough silence that she could have fixed it up. And she, she chose not to. So I think she meant it. And I think he caught on that she meant it. But and then he, feel that way. he just like got close to her and yeah eventually because so when i rewatched it it felt much longer the first time i watched it, i was like oh, okay it just seemed like he leaned into her much faster mm -hmm. that was a lot of time in between that i love you but in his defense like okay y'all have been saying all episode you're gonna take things slow mm -hmm. they say that you're her boyfriend then you help her find the dog and now she's saying she loves you like I would have kind of been like, it was a lot for one day. <laughs> it was too. It wasn't. Just, it was too much for one day. Him being like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like that was a natural response to me. And even though it was it was awkward, I can appreciate him not like jumping to say it back if he mm. just didn't feel that way yeah they they need more conversations like i i think they have a lot of conversations like vibey conversations but i think they need more like concrete conversations <laughs> because there are just too many like loose loose things being thrown out this episode <laughs> that i would have loved to see some like structure to um yeah one thing i feel like lawrence and him have in common is that Neither one, like, I think if she asks them a question, they'll be open with her and say, hey, this is how I feel. But to me, both of them lack assertiveness in relation to, like, moving whatever they have going forward. 
You're right. If she and Lawrence like do the whole circle back thing, which I'm hoping they don't, I feel I would be interested to see how this whole baby thing has impacted him because he is being more assertive with like the whole condola situation, even though some sometimes it's a little bit too late. But um, yeah, I think that has made him grow up because he came to her and specifically said, hey, this is what's going on with condola. I still want this, but you know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that is interesting. How did you feel about her seeing them at the end? Oh my, this girl has the worst luck. And LA cannot be that small. Uh, I was like, I hope she doesn't say anything. I hope she keeps it moving. Like, it's one thing if you walk right into them. Mm -hmm. Going this way and you're like way over there. I'm not saying anything. Yeah, she just catch a break. Like every time, th well, I don't, I don't even want to say things are going great for her, but every time, like she's past it, it's like here he comes, showing up randomly in the picture, you know. And I know it had to hurt seeing him, the baby Condola, because now she's probably wondering, like, ooh, are they together? Why is he with her? Um, at this and I do wonder if. Because, like, she wouldn't know this, but, like, he was saying that he didn't want the baby. Like, the last time he talked to her, you know, he was just like, yeah, I'm going to raise my child, but I want no parts of it, at, you know, other than that. And so if they have been working on things and they are cool or together, like, that would be hurtful because she'd be questioning that entire last time or, you know, I guess last few weeks that they were actually together because she thought she would be thinking, like, well, what? was what we had like real. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Um, shout out to Lawrence for actually like being at the appointment. Shout out to Condola for like including him. I don't know the details of it, but I was happy to see them there. Uh, it took me back to season one. No, it must have been season two when um, she and Lawrence made up. Mm -hmm. Had that like flash forward or whatever it's called. <laughs> showing them pregnant and then with the child. And so that's why I said I know it had to have hurt because those were the things that she was envisioning happen, um, like going on with him. And now she's with somebody who hasn't even said, I love you back. But that's mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked the episode. I thought it was a lot um, in a short period of time. So, so what was the funniest moment of this episode for you? Um, okay, so one of them was when she walked out in Molly's dress, and the lady was like, oh my god, you look like a model. And the nurse goes, sorry, she's high. It's like, dang, oh can I talk with it? Yeah, that was, the, yeah, that would have been my number one funniest moment of the episode. Um, That and then the family going into the wrong room <laughs> do you honestly think this woman is my contemporary it was just so cute <laughs> mm -hmm. or when she said um he was like oh yeah molly looks just like her mom she was like oh yeah their ankles do look alike <laughs> <laughs> oh can we talk about how isa is not here for flavor flame if you ever had a dog that would be me because i don't really do pets like <laughs> She like, was like, I mean, he a house dog. He know what to do. Well, thank God Nathan was there because that poor dog was not going to make it. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm excited to see next week. I don't know if you've seen the previews, but um, they showed Issa saying wait to Lawrence and Condola. Oh, I did see it. I don't think that's actually going to happen. I think it's something that she's going to like envision, but it's not going to be real because what is she saying wait for? Like what, what more does she have to say to him? At mm -hmm. this point? Um, so there's that. And then um, she's trying to make amends with Crenshaw, which yes, he's not her task to do, but I understand as a businesswoman why she will have to do that. Yeah. And you know, you were really here for him. Carl, you, you were taken up for him. <laughs> here you go. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, we uh, will be back next week. 
Mm -hmm. um, following Next Insecure. Um, we don't have a new episode coming out this Friday because it's a holiday week. So I hope everybody enjoys their holiday, but we do have an episode that's running right now. So make sure that you guys listen to that. It's available on all podcast platforms. So yeah, definitely check it out. And we will see you guys next Monday for Insecure Season 5, Episode 6. I know. We're over halfway there. Halfway there. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Bye.